Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the solemnity of the body and blood of Christ. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollard. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today, the Church throughout the world celebrates the feast of the most holy body and blood of Christ, Corpus Christi. We are called to be the body of Christ in the world. At the times perhaps we haven't been like Christ in the world, let's begin by asking the Lord for mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty oh God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, in the wonderful sacrament, have left us a memorial of your passion. Grant us, we pray so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days... Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High, and he blessed Abram and said, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, maker of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And Abram gave him a tenth of everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You are priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. You are, you are priest forever in the, in the line, line of, of Melchizedek. Melchizedek. The Lord's revelation to my Lord. Sit at my right hand until I make your foes your footstool. You are, you are a priest, priest forever, forever in the, the line, line of, of Melchizedek. Melchizedek. The Lord will send from Zion your scepter of power. Rule in the midst of your foes. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. With you is princely rule. On the day of your power, in holy splendor from the womb before the dawn, 
I have begotten you. You are, you are a priest, priest forever, forever in the, the line, line of Melchizedek. The Lord has sworn an oath he will not change. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. You, you are, are a priest, priest forever, forever in, in the, the line, line of Melchizedek. Melchizedek. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the chalice, after supper, saying, This chalice is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the chalice, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the living bread which came down from heaven, says the Lord. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus spoke to the crowds of the kingdom of God and cured those who were in need of healing. Now the day began to wear away, and the twelve came and said to him, Send the crowd away to go into the villages and country around about to lodge and get provisions, for we are here in a lonely place. But he said to them, You give them something to eat. And they said, We have no more than five loaves and two fish, unless we are to go and buy food for all these people for there were about 5,000 men. And he said to his disciples, Make them sit down in companies, about 50 each. And they did so, and made them all sit down. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven, and blessed and broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. And all ate and were satisfied, and they took up what was left over. Twelve baskets of broken pieces. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The miracle of the loaves and the fish has to be perhaps one of the most action packed stories in the Gospel of Luke. Because in just five and a half verses, Luke revisits, believe it or not, the whole of Israel's history. And he narrates this extraordinary event, this miracle, and outlines an agenda for the future, the kingdom that is to come. Five elements in the story reveal the depth of this account. We're told, we are told 12 came to Jesus. That represents the 12 tribes or the nations of Israel. We're told that they were in a deserted place, which recalls Israel's time in the desert and the complaints in the desert about the lack of food and water. We're told of these seven gifts that are presented an echo of that creation story, that they are told to sit down in groups of about 50, which was a jubilee number in Israel. And a jubilee was a time for renewal and for forgiveness and for rest. And then finally, we are told again of the 12 baskets of broken pieces, another allusion to Israel. 
And so Luke tells us, the new Israel, the church, that we will be recreated into a community where everyone, all the 12 tribes are welcome. A community of forgiveness and freedom, of justice and abundance for all. But something that comes at cost because there were 12 there were broken pieces in these 12 baskets and this gospel is chosen because it tells us something about the eucharist it tells us that the eucharist which we celebrate is not something that is static the eucharist should not just be an object of our worship. But just as we are embodied beings that receive this physical Eucharist, our lives are meant to be broken as the bread is broken and the cup is poured out. And so therefore, if we really want to honor the Eucharist, if we are Eucharistic people, then we would be tireless in being broken for the sake of good, for forgiveness, for freedom, and for justice. You know, our worship at the altar, our reception of communion, is especially linked, I think, to being judged by how we are recreating what is happening around us. Each day, how we are recreating the life of Christ. This feast is really one about Jesus who gives himself for the sake of others. The great philosopher and theologian, St. Augustine, speaking of the Eucharist, says, we need to become the one whom we receive. So the question, it seems to me, that's put before us when we come together to celebrate Corpus Christi is how we become because we are nourished by the Lord, nourishment for others. You know, very often people uh, talk about and are worried about who receives worthily and if people have gone to confession. And I often wonder about that. I wonder what worthily really means. Because seldom when we talk about people being worthy, do we talk about the urgent situation that we find ourselves in, in society and in this country? In many ways, despite us claiming to be the body of Christ, we have failed. We receive unworthily. We have not become the one whom we receive. There are growing practices in our churches about people kneeling at communion. And I think reverence is good. But I wonder if we go out of the church and reverence others as they should be reverenced. Because it is no use falling on our knees to receive the Eucharist and walking out the door and condemning people because perhaps they are divorced or because they identify as LGBTI, or because a woman has had an abortion. It seems to me, then, that we have failed to recognize what we are doing. Then our reverence is simply just pious and empty. Let's take that another step. We live in a society where there is an increasing gap between the haves and the have-nots. South Africa now has the biggest disparity between the rich and the poor in the world. There is more corruption in South African society on every single level of our society. We are fast becoming molded by corruption and by greed and by consumerism. And very often, it is people both in the public sphere and the private sphere 
who participate in religious practices like coming to celebrate the Eucharist, who are involved in the downfall of a whole society because of their greed and their consumerism and their corruption. We see ourselves obligated to do these things in church. And yet, when we move out of church, we act in a completely different way. And so I think this Feast of the Body and Blood of Christ invites us to go further. It invites us not just to give out of our possessions because we want to be charitable, but it asks of us to give of our very selves, to be as Jesus was, to be willing to self-sacrifice. And nobody who is willing to self-sacrifice is corrupt or consumerist or unjust. The inequality in our society and at, and at times even in our church reminds us that we have not fully understood or maybe do not even really want to understand what it means to be the body of Christ, the one whom we receive. Let's pray today as we come around this table of the Eucharist that we would have the courage to replicate the actions and the attitude of Jesus Christ, the one whom we receive in our own lives, not only in church, but in the very way that we choose to conduct ourselves. When we do that, then indeed we are. Corpus Christi. Let's make together now a profession of faith as we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We have heard the challenge of God's word to become the body of Christ. Let's now bring our prayers before the Lord. For the Church, that this may be an instrument of peace and sign of unity in a world that is divided and at war. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all the Church's ministers, that their service of others may be faithful to the example of Christ who gives himself in the service of all. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who govern the nations of the world, that they may strive to rid the world of fear, prejudice, and hatred. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the sick, the lonely, and those who feel unloved, that they may, in their isolation, come to know the love and presence of Christ through us, members of the body of Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For this community gathered all the world to worship together, that our celebration of the Eucharist may strengthen our faith and deepen our love for one another. 
Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our own special needs, we pray in silence for our own needs at this time. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, we give you thanks that you make us part of the body of Christ by the one whom we receive. Help us through these our prayers to live as Christ present in our world. We make this prayer through him who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth, work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God's bread. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Let's pray, friends, that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of our lives may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by the sacred mystery, you make them holy, so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, 
We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Buti, our Bishop, and all the clergy and all who minister to your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray now in the words that our Savior himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom and glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer those around us a sign of God's peace. If you are alone, simply just spend a few moments now praying for peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body and blood of Christ, bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. 
In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.